Hello YouTubers, this is another video repair session that I'm doing with the LG Flattron L194WT-SF. I got this um, monitor for free. Somebody's going to throw it out in the garbage, so I took it off their hands and, well, it wasn't working when I received it. And I kind of had a feeling that it was one of two things, either a blown fuse, which is very uncommon, or worn out capacitors. And if you don't know what a capacitor is, it's just a small little part. Uh, most circuit boards have these. And usually they run anywhere from 25 cents to, I don't know, $3. But on this particular circuit board, I did locate a bad capacitor. And you can tell a bad capacitor usually by its shape. On the top of this capacitor, there's a little metal flat piece, or not a piece, but it's a flat surface. Usually when they're bad, the capacitor has a dome shape to the top of the capacitor. It's puffed out. Sometimes it's even burn out with black soot. But in general, they usually puff out and sometimes they leak like a white or yellowish powder or residue. In the case of this circuit board on this LG monitor there was one blown capacitor. I did go ahead and replace all four that were the same uh, value. But anyways I'm sure a couple of you or some of you or most of you were looking for this video are having the same problem. The monitor does not turn on, it does not power on, it does not do anything. It just doesn't respond to any anything at all. You push the power button and nothing happens and that's what happened with this monitor. But like I said this is an LG once again I will repeat LG 194 4WT uh, Flattron 19 inch uh, LCD monitor. Right there see it's LG. But anyways taking this apart is fairly easy. On the back of the monitor there are four screws you want to remove those okay and that's and that's it as far as screws taking that off now <clears throat> you will have to get like a like a putty knife or a razor blade I wouldn't recommend or make yeah, recommend a razor blade sorry but something that's flat and very thin because you will have to pry off this front bezel all the way around from the case <clears throat> Normally I would have a, I would actually take it apart on video, but this is kind of a rush job. I actually fixed it, and then I decided to make the video. But anyways, uh, like I said, here's the bezel. It, it'll snap around the front of the, the casing. Basically, like I said, you just pry it around. You'll see little tabs to stick something in there. Maybe a very flat screwdriver, you know, a flathead screwdriver, and just keep prying around and around and around, all the way around. Eventually, you will get it off. You may break off a couple tabs, but you know what? If you're you're having to repair stuff, you know, and you just want to monitor, or you want to get back in business, you know, as far as getting back to work or doing whatever you're doing with your monitor, you know, you know, looks don't really matter. And the worst case, if you really worry, really worry about looks, you can always glue the damn thing back on. But you know, like I said, you may break a couple tabs, which I have done, maybe one or two, but it's no big deal. But you know, taking that off, we'll remove the actual screen from the uh, from the case, and it should, it'll lift, it'll lift right out. So. But anyways, I kind of have this rigged, kind of, I guess you could say rigged together right now, because I'm going to put it back together, but basically any harnesses you can see, like that one there, you can unplug it, and there's one here, you can unplug it, just unplug it, and these here, <clears throat> there's four little sockets, you want to just kind of 
squeeze the little tab on the socket and pull them out. I actually kind of messed up. I actually labeled the sockets when I took it apart because, well, I thought well, that would be a great idea. Well, I kind of forgot to write the numbers. I wrote one, two, three, four on the sockets, and I forgot to put the one, two, three, four on the actual wiring. So when I actually finished soldering all the capacitors back in, I forgot that I didn't well, have the wiring in the correct position. But I kind of guessed at it, and I put red, blue, red, blue, and it, it, it fired right up. I just plugged it in. But anyways, getting to the capacitors and the board itself, there's one, two, three, four screws. This whole board will lift right out, straight up, after you unplug all these wires. And then you can actually do the work on it. You will need a uh, either a desoldering iron or a desoldering bulb or... Some people like to use desoldering wick, which is just copper braided wire. I prefer the desoldering iron. Um, it's basically just a soldering iron with a uh, suction bulb, and it sucks the solder after you heat the joint up or the connection up. When you're trying to get the part out, it sucks the solder into the bulb. I like those. They're, if you live in the United States, they're usually like 10 12 bucks, and you can order them up. Order those online, probably from eBay or other electronics supply warehouses or parts stores or whatever. But I prefer the desoldering iron. But anyways, um, like I said, getting to the capacitors. You see a whole group of these capacitors here. Of course, I replaced all these capacitors. One, two, three, four. I replaced all four. They are a thousand microfarad, twenty-five volt capacitors. You know, I could. I had some laying around because I do tend to fix other monitors, and usually the parts are usually the same, so I uh, had some laying around. But I'm guessing they're roughly around 50 cents to maybe a dollar a piece if, at most. Um, you can order these parts from Mauser.com, DigiKey, uh, Radio Shack. Um, just type in electrical parts into Yahoo or Google or whatever. You know, electronic components, supply stores, you know, there's tons and tons of places that sell parts, but uh, like I said, they're not expensive. This whole repair might cost you five bucks, if that. <clears throat> of course, if you've gone into other further damage, well, then it can get costly. There's transistors, there's transformers, bigger, you know, Capacitors, you know, diodes, resistors. If you get, in, if you have a board that's burned up, I mean, you, if you're knowledgeable about fixing electronics, you could get into replacing parts. But you could get into a whole another mess. You know, you could spend twenty five dollars on parts and try to fix it yourself, and still not have any results as far as having a fixed board. But usually, these, you know, televisions, computer screens. You know, the LCD, LED type. The common problem with these is uh, bad capacitors. Over time, they can get hot. They get, you know, they get worn out and they leak. They're kind of like batteries. I'm not saying they are batteries. They don't function as a battery, but they are like batteries. You know, over time, if they get hot too much or too much heat, they will leak. And once they leak, they go bad. And they don't, they don't you know serve their function anymore so the circuit is closed or doesn't operate at the proper voltage but um, you know with any electronics you can always get into costly repairs there's ICs and PLL chips and you know all kinds of memory circuits and you know stuff like that sometimes when stuff like that breaks well you're, you're better off just buying another monitor or whatever you're working on like I said that's a cheap fix capacitors I got other videos on YouTube about fixing uh, TVs and stuff um, the monitors 90% of the time and actually I would say 95% of the time if you get a monitor out of the garbage or you have one that goes bad or is starting to go bad 95% of the time it's the capacitors and that's Pretty much with any electronics too. 
old radios, old televisions, old electronics, you know. Capacitors just wear out. Just, it's just what they do. They don't last forever. Anyways, like I said, you'll see, if you take this monitor apart, you will see the capacitors. If they have a bulging top on them, like a bulge, or they're pushed out or leaking, you'll see a little bit of yellow stuff or white stuff, and the top will be dome-shaped. That usually means there's a back capacitor. Replace it. Take it out. The back side of the motherboard has solder traces. You will want to flip the board over, which I can't do right now because i got it screwed in. The board's you know, screwed under the casing, but um, you will remove that solder. And on a capacitor, you have a positive and a negative. That's the negative side and the positive. Even my dogs agree. You can hear that. But that's about it. I will have future videos about repairs and stuff like that. So keep checking back. But hopefully this video helped you repair your LG L194WT LCD Flattron monitor. Thanks for watching.